Smosh used to be the biggest channel ever, having some of the most popular videos for their time. Now if you look at them, you can tell the charm that used to be there has slowly but surely disappeared. Some of the original cast went their separate ways, and Smosh has just gone from one of the biggest channels on YouTube to one of the most forgettable. Let me ask you something, when was the last time you saw a Smosh video in your recommendations? Not that often I suppose, I mean, Pokemon Real Life number 25, I don't freaking know. Some of their videos have even had a hard time breaking the 1 million mark as of recent. So what happened exactly? Well today, let's try and find that out. What caused the downfall of Smosh? Smosh started in 2002 as a website for Anthony and his friends to chat after school. Later, Anthony got together with his friend Ian and started lip singing to music that they grew up with. Songs like the Mortal Kombat theme song, Later, they decided to start doing more diverse sets of videos, like the That Damn Neighbor videos, or even the annual food battle videos. They became so big that they started getting tons of brand deals and a bunch of TV appearances. They eventually were so big that in 2011, they sold Smosh to Alloy Digital, which as of 2013, merged with Break Media to start Defy Media. It was around this time, we began to start seeing that Smosh does have, you know, a lot of quality with their budget and everything, but it's more script-wise and the humor that started slowly dropping. So, what happened? Well, the way Smosh makes the videos costs lots of money. Every Friday having a sketch video, alongside maintaining other work for their other channels, side projects, you know, like the Shut Up Cartoons, oh, now when was the last time you heard that? It was also impossible for them to go completely independent. So when they sold Smosh as a brand, their involvement kept getting fewer and fewer, and none of this is more obvious than 2014's Smosh the Movie, written and directed by Ian and Anthony themselves. <laughs> what, do you think I was serious? No. They had nothing to do with it. Instead, we got this guy named Dalex Winter, famous for directing such hits as... Ben Benton, Race Against Time. Red Hot Chili Peppers Knock Me Down music video. The Playboy's Channel Inside Out Late Night Anthology Series. What? There were some people of notable works, like Steve Marmel, who worked on Johnny Bravo, Fairly Odd Parents, Family Guy, and Jimmy Neutron. Alongside with Eric Falconer, who wrote and produced Blue Mountain State, The Rise of Thadland. It had a 5.9 on IMDb, so wasn't that good but I, I can't be bothered to go check. The point I'm trying to say here is that they had very little involvement in this movie, let alone their channel. They also made tons of albums and even a new movie. But you can tell it just isn't the same as, you know, from earlier on in their careers. Sure, you can give some of this to their loss of ideas since having uploaded so much, it's gonna happen eventually that you're gonna run out. But how are you supposed to get, you know, new ideas when all your suggestions are just going through a filter. Twenty fifteen could be considered the time that the content was at its lowest point. Around then, their content rarely had Ian and Anthony even in it. Adding a new cast of actors with fresh new faces, in early twenty sixteen, they started up a show called Part Timers, which tried to bring new life into the channel, but the episodes barely broke the million mark, which is very bad for a channel of their size. And with Anthony's recent departure, it shows what a company can do to a brand. And honestly, I'm surprised it didn't happen any sooner. 